If you're sick and tired of wobbly fabrication projects that just don't seem to sit flush, then this video right here, it's for you. Now any fabricator worth their goal will tell you, anytime you weld something, it's gonna move. Distortion happens. Heat tends to heat things up, and when it cools off, it pulls, and it contracts, and it moves. It moves a lot, even with a lot of weld already on it. And that's what today's lesson is gonna be all about, trying out different metals like stainless, aluminum, and carbon steel, and seeing just how much they move when we just do some simple TIG welding. So here's what we're gonna end up doing today. I got this idea from Paul Sobleski. If you don't know who Paul is, he used to be on the channel, and he did a video just like this, where he zip-tied a laser pointer to the end of a piece of tube, and shot a laser to a target and welded something out to see how much it actually moves. We're gonna do that exact same thing today, except we're gonna be doing it with stainless steel, aluminum, and carbon steel. We've got one foot piece of two inch by two inch tubing, about eighth inch wall, tack to a six inch by six inch piece of 11 gauge. Everything's the same, same material size and thickness, just different metals. And what we're gonna do is start with three different colored markers. We're gonna have red, right here for stainless, blue for carbon, and then this, I don't know, teal color for aluminum. We're gonna start by coming over here, finding our laser mark, and we're going to put us a little dot. Now that's gonna be our starting point for our stainless. As we weld, things should move away from that original dot. And as we weld all the way around, if I do it properly, I should get really close to being back to where it was. But after every weld, we're gonna track and see the differences between these three metals. I'm pretty excited. Let's get the machine set up and get suited up. Now being that we have to run AC and DC TIG, we're gonna crank up the old Everlast Typhoon 230, the Stallion. This is gonna be the best machine in my shop for the job. We're gonna start with stainless first, so we're gonna be swapping between AC and DC TIG. And right now for the eighth inch material that we're gonna be welding on, probably gonna do somewhere around 120, 125, 130. I do want enough speed. I want to be able to move quickly. The slower we move, the more distortion we have. So for all three of these examples, we're gonna to try to weld hot, weld fast, and blast the gas. Less for aluminum on the gas part. I think we'll see a lot of distortion in that way as well. We got everything set up. The machine's pretty intuitive as far as getting everything together. We're not gonna do anything crazy as far as pulse. And to mitigate some distortion, we wanna see a lot of it. I'll be using some 332 tungsten. I've got my setup here. Two things that I'd like to have at all times is my beefy handle and uh, a nice welding cap. You'll never catch me without a welding cap on under my hood. I feel freaking naked. And you can get these at Outlaw Leather. We got a discount code in the description below. Same thing with our Cayman welding gloves. They're running a special for like a month. It's, so it's limited time and you can use that code 15 welder at checkout to get you some some discounts on some welding gloves not only that but if you use the same link in our description for everlast and you happen to come across a machine that you like you can get an upgraded torch or a foot pedal with the purchase check out those links in the description guys and then you can get all suited up with our favorite things all right we've got us some 16th inch stainless wire here i'm gonna put the first weld across the top and we're not going to probably watch that laser because i'm going to be in the way of it I'm trying to make this weld but we'll see how much it moves after this this should be the one weld that makes the most movement as there's only tacks holding everything too come on austin try not to get in the way of this camera Ooh, i suck anyway there's weld on there not very pretty. Dang, we got some movement though. We moved like a whole inch and an eighth on that laser. A little bit up and to the right, which makes sense because we welded from this way to that way. Pretty common that it's gonna end up doing that. Absolutely gonna happen. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually weld the bottom side. We should always be trying to weld on a piece of tubing. We have a square there. We just welded this one right to left. We wanna come to the opposite side and weld left to right. We wanna continue the direction of what the, the welding that we're doing. We never wanna weld this way to this way, then this way to this way, because then this is gonna pull even harder away from our original point, and we don't want that. So again, we know that we went from right to left that time, so now we need to go to the absolute opposite side and weld left to right. A little challenging in this overhead position. Now, you'll notice it didn't move as much because we have a weld on it, and that's the point of welding the absolute opposite side. But it did still move. We just welded from here to here. Now, we can't just keep going because that's not the opposite side. It's still kind of half hard welding. We gotta jump back to the opposite side from where we stuck first weld and run this little bit downhill. 
That's the best weld yet. Ooh, that moved. Check that out. And from here, starting to come back down though. I guess that's something. I don't see how we're gonna make it back all the way back to square one. Now this one might pull a little bit harder because we're probably gonna have to weld a little slower being that we're going to go uphill. That's more or less what I would thought would have happened. That laser doesn't really move at all on that finer weld. Obviously we're not back to zero. When you got something that's not like, doesn't have anything holding it on the opposite side or you don't have anything clamped down and you know it's just like free flowing in the wind, you might end up having to do something along the nature of fitting it out of square and then welding it out so that it becomes square. Always something to consider because you can see how much we moved. Move this one out of the way. Get this out of here. I got some marks for the plate. I'm gonna try to put that laser pointing at the same place that stainless was pointing so we get what each of them do right next to each other. Carbon steel, zip tied laser, pretty much right on the chili from the, where the stainless steel was. Blue. Ready to rock and roll, 16th inch TIG wire. First beat on. Did not move near as much as the stainless steel. This was to be expected. I figured carbon steel would, wouldn't grow as much. We're probably about half the distance of the actual stainless steel and it didn't pull near as hard to the opposite direction either. I think it maybe went just a skosh over to the right by like almost nothing. Nothing that's gonna be something that you're gonna see from a fabrication standpoint from over there. All right, now we do the bottom. Not a whole lot of movement on the carbon either. We probably moved just a skosh, guys. Like, I don't even need to put a straight edge on it. Pretty much in the same freaking spot. Pretty safe to say nothing's probably gonna move a whole lot. Yeah, check that out, it went back down. It went big down a lot. That pulled so much far, farther down. We're about halfway back to zero. Way different than the stainless steel. Let's put this last weld on. We're gonna be going welding up. That laser should wanna pull up and that's not the direction we wanna go. What a funny direction. I didn't expect it to go that way. It went like this way. Strange. Minimal distortion going on with carbon steel than stainless steel. But what about aluminum? Let's set this one up next. I'm gonna switch it over to AC. This is 230 amps this thing got. I probably won't get close to 200, but we're gonna keep that up there. We're gonna use the same setup, get some beads on there. We got the laser set back up. It's right on the chili where the other one started. Now when it comes to aluminum, especially on a part that's like kind of cold, this first weld is gonna take a little bit more heat. I'm gonna adjust, make an assumption here. I'm no aluminum wizard, but I think that we're gonna get a happy little in between the stainless and the carbon steel as far as distortion goes. Definitely gotta get a lot of heat into this aluminum before it really starts to wet out, which could make distortion a lot worse. Slower travel speed will definitely affect a pull. That barely moved at all. That is pretty curious because again, we started right where everything else is and all we did was Barely, that marker doesn't work. We'll use black for the aluminum, but we started just right where everyone else was and we just barely made it over just a little bit, which is kind of nice, I guess. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. It's actually continuing to move. So as this aluminum cools off, it's starting to draw up a little bit. Way slower reaction than both of the carbon and the stainless. That's pretty interesting. Let's get this awful overhead bit done. My head, dang it. It was like somewhere in there. That sucks. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but we did move from here to here. And side to side, I messed up. The up and down should not have changed much. The fact that it's up here now means that it did pull up from that first weld and it doesn't seem to be like it's pulling up much more, but we do need to mark this down. And make sure we don't hit that laser level again or laser pointer. Let's go ahead and slap these other two welds on. Let's 
It's still pulling. I'm watching this thing move right now. It's still pulling. So now we went down, which makes sense because that, that was the direction of welding that we did. So we went from here to here, up to there. Let's do this last weld uphill. Whoa, where are you going there, cowboy? The biggest takeaway that I'm getting from the aluminum is you can't just assume where it's gonna go because it takes some time for it to actually cool off all the way. Same with any of the other metals. It's just the thermal expansion on aluminum is just way, way different than stainless or, or carbon steel. So it moves a lot, it just moves slower. Now I've never tried this experiment before and I think it actually is a little bit of an eye opener and some of the stuff that I kind of expected to see. Now just looking at our little bit of dotting here, we'll just start with the stainless. Obviously the first weld on the stainless, it grew significant and went all the way up to this point. And then every weld after that seemed to be kind of clustered in where you wanted it. In my head is like, okay, that first weld is the most critical. I need to make sure that that one is the most secure or I fit the part up enough that it's actually gonna move to where it needs to be if I know that first one is moving. All that stuff right there is probably gonna be okay as far as keeping things square. There's not a whole lot of movement. Moving into the carbon steel, everything pretty much stayed pretty close to where it needed to be. That first weld did make it jump, but not near as far as the stainless steel. And then it just slowly and slowly moved back to close to where it is. And I bet that's gonna be our best result as far as keeping things square with carbon steel without being anything being held or clamped or, I mean, you gotta realize if you don't fix something that you're trying to weld or it's not fixed to something already, it's gonna move, it's gonna move a lot. So you have to be prepared for it. And the aluminum is kind of, I wanna say it moved a lot. It does move a lot, it moves a lot slower. It takes a little bit of time for it to get to that point. Stainless, when it cools, it'll be, it'll cool quick and then it pulls, like cool pull. This one's like cool pull. Oh, that sounded kind of weird, but those are the results. And I think with either the aluminum or carbon, you're really not too much uh, in danger. Knowing these things is helpful. Other thing that we found out, if we look here, Look at all that. Look at all that floppy sloppiness. That is the distortion of the plate that it was welded to. So not only is it moving around, but the bottom plate is bowing up every time. If you weld something to one side of it, it always bows to that direction. So how do you prevent that? Again, clamping all four sides, fixing things in place so that they cannot move when you go to weld them. Same thing with our aluminum. We have a bit of a wobble in that plate. The carbon steel. Probably the least amount of wobble. What exactly is it in these different materials that makes things pull so much differently? Let us know down in the comments. I'd like to hear you all's opinion on the matter. And I think it was a really good experiment today. If you have any other suggestions for cool things to try out, let us know. I like doing this type of stuff. I like learning new things. That's the beauty of the industry is you'll never quit learning. We'll see you on the next learning experiment. It's gonna pull even harder away from our original point. We don't want that. That's not an expo marker. Fantastic. Oh, come on. There's gotta be a better way. Turn this fan off, I guess. Who likes being comfortable? Not me.